Um, okay, so I'm going to get started with Tomies. Um, all right, Tomies, so the reason why I opened up MS Paint is to show you um, the minimalist, the minimalist um, sort of way you've chosen your colors for the background. That's the first thing that popped out at me. You're trying to force, a, this is a character design exhibition. You're exhibiting your characters and their purpose and their co costumes and their design and sort of what they're all about, right? And that you, and then you're forcing the presence of a background. You even got your little, you got your little brushes for grass ready for the background. Um, I've said this 101 times, and I'm willing to say it 110 more times. Um, do not try to make masterpieces out of either studies or character concept spreads. If a character concept is supposed to be, or a character design spread, or a stand-up, or turnaround, whatever it is, if it's meant to be simply to show the character in all of their glory, just as the character themselves, like a fashion show for the character, just leave the background blank. It's more professional that way. It looks, and I'm not going to be, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it anymore, it looks super cheesy when you guys try to force an environment that isn't even part of the focus, isn't even part of the purpose of the design, isn't even why you sat down on your computer to draw it. This is a character design. Uh, whether you try to define it as something else, uh, industry-wise, and uh, whether you care about the industry or not, um, it's a very limited sort of label you can add to certain kind of illustrations and their layouts and their, con um, and their, um, their uh, what's it called, compositions. And so when you have two characters standing beside each other and, and the real uh, focus of the image is their costume and the intricacies and the details and how they're standing and their attitude and where they're looking and the adventure that we're starting to see in our imagination it really becomes a character layout that's all it really ends up being it's not going to be some sort of uh, comic book scene um, where's the rest of the panels it's not going to be um, uh, in between pages of a book uh, kind of like character display or like a scene from a book that you've decided to illustrate no where's the rest of the book it's not if it's a single standing character design illustration meant to be uh, viewed as as some sort of exhibition for the characters it's a character design illustration um, and that's it and character design concepts um, you know spreads layouts turnarounds like I said have to have a plain background. They have to have a, a gray background, some very minimal gradient happening, very, very minimal background. And not just that, the fact that you added the background and you chose these simplistic colors that are really reminiscent of the illustrations we used to paint when Photoshop was like, <laughs> uh, when we were like, you know, like 10, 12 years old playing around with MS Paint. I just simply chose the colors they gave me. Very primary, very diluted, very, um, very basic colors. Basic is the, this is the most simple term. Basic colors are what you chose very basically. Okay, blue background, green grass. No. If you, ha if you know anything about environment, you know this. The blue isn't really blue and the green isn't really green uh, for backgrounds and, 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 and uh, concept art for, for environments. It's a very uh, complicated color vocabulary. It needs to be a lot more uh, complicated in order to display some level of atmosphere, some level of depth, some level of environment, some level of world and physics. So, um, so Tommy, do you get me? Are you with me on this? If you're trying to show off your characters, please close off the background. You don't need it. Get rid of it. You have an amazing taste for character design. Look at the colors you chose, beautiful colors. Look at the, the poses. All of that is distracting me from seeing the character. The background is distracting me from seeing the character. So, um, welcome, Irish. <laughs> Thank you for the customary table flip. Um, I appreciate your <laughs> consistency. Um, so, Tommy, next time you do a character design, and you really want to get into it, and you really want me to get into the critique, don't distract my eyes and don't distract the eyes of your viewers from seeing the beautiful d d design and detail you've placed in this. All that time, Tommy, that you spent on the environment in the background, you could have spent on the details. You could have really done something with the leather. You could have added some more uh, seams. You could have added some stitches, some extra detail, some embroidery. You could have really done something all that time you spent on the background, the grass, and the sky. All right, so environments are another thing. When I, when you guys think about, okay, I want to be, in 30 years, I want to be good at environments, character design, portraits, I want to be good at mech design, and I want to be good at um, 
you know, whatever, else, architectural design. All right, you want to you have those five down. You want to be a pro. You want to be a freaking pro. Um, you can't just expect you, yourself to improve if you have a little bit of each in every painting that you're going to draw from here on out. You're not going to improve if you're going to have a little bit of environment, a little bit of character design, a little bit of portraiture, a little bit in every painting that you draw and you try to jumble it all in one big experience um, on a paper. That's not how it happens. How it happens is you take it step by step. You fragment your learning process, meaning you dedicate a year. Yeah, I'm talking a year to, to, to portraiture. Then the next year you're going to dedicate it to, to figure drawing and really perfecting your figure drawing. Then the next year you're going to dedicate it to discovering environments and really experimenting with environments, learning the physics, going in there and getting some visual library um, improvement and advancement and update. Um, and then if you want to go into architectural design, the next year you're going to do that. You're not going to be able to do everything if you're going to try to do it all in one year. If you try to do it all in a couple months. It's not going to happen like that. You have to spend time a decent amount of time to really saturate your mind with the specific topic at hand. Right now, tell me, perfect your character design. Okay? That's my piece of advice to you. Keep going with the character design. Forget environments for a second. Um, take on environments when you're good and ready and you're, you have a good hold over um, uh, figure, figure drawings and uh, figure stance and character portraits and all of that stuff that will be necessary. Um, in order to add in a character in an environment and make sure scales are appropriate and perspective is appropriate. All right, and figure skating. Did I say figure skating? <laughs> Did I say figure skating? Oh, please don't tell me I said figure skating. <clears throat> um, is, the, is it professionally viable to only be specific like only a character designer? Yes, it is. Absolutely. If, you're, if your only purpose in the art world and the pre-production or post-production process of any kind of creation of any art project, game or movie or otherwise, if all you can do is draw environments, that's fine. But you got to be hella good at it and you got to really work at it. And that has, that's going to be your defining achievement. So that's going to be something that you have to give all your attention to. You're going to have to give all, all of your um, study, study girth to. The girth of your study has to be dedicated to that one thing that you want to be a specialist in. That's why you're, that's, it's called the specialist. You're going to be a specialist in that. They're going to go to you, to give you to, for, for you to give them that specific look that you're capable of. <laughs> all of your girth. <laughs> Um, so yes, I love that word, girth, sue me. <laughs> um, so yes, it's okay, but, but, give yourself some credit, you're capable of more. Oh, that fear in you is talking and saying, hey, um, I just want to be a character designer, thanks very much, see ya. Um, that's your fear, and if you're capable of more, if you just learn the physics, I'm here to teach you guys the, the basic basics, I'm here to tell you, my whole mission statement is about showing you guys it's really not that complicated to build up to build a, a reasonable environment that looks physically possible it's not that impossible it's just a couple of of, of of physics rules you have to just entertain and that's it so it's give yourself some credit I'm sure you're capable of everything that I'm teaching I'm sure you're capable of reproducing something like that so uh, all I'm saying is just take your time on each subject so you can perfect it so not every painting you're gonna paint from here to, to year 30 is going to be um, a hit and miss. It, uh, why don't you just get a couple of hits in for character design and then get a couple misses in for environment but only a couple misses in you're gonna start getting hits for environment and you know that's that's just the best way to do it taking your time and dedicating it concentrating it on one topic so you can improve right so that being said and um, I don't mind repeating myself I'm probably gonna say it 101 more times in my life as a teacher <laughs> Um, let me up this. <clears throat> Do experiment if you feel like experimenting, but please, if you have stuff that you want to be added to your portfolio, stuff you want on your gallery, don't mix it up. We mix it with your environment. Um, keep your character designs and all that hard work stuff for your port pro um, for your what's it called for your uh, portfolio. Come on, you can do it, little flower. It's a cute flower. <clears throat> Stuff like this, keep it for your portfolio character design or the basic gray background. I'm going to show you how to lay it out a little bit better so that you can have a better sort of hold um, over the figure and the stance. It'll look more believable. 
So what you've done here, because you added a background, you added one character behind the other, that's really pointless at this point, um, at this stage, because when we add in the gray background, you're going to want both characters to stand on the on the same level so that you can show their relationship, height relationship to each other. That's something really important as well, their sizes and scaling. And um, when you send it off to a 3D modeler, what the 3D modeler can do with your design. Because that's what you are. You're the concept artist. You're what the 3D modeler works off of. You're what the, co um, uh, the costume designer works off of. Uh, they all use your information and the stuff you've illustrated for them. So you have to do a decent job at covering every detail that's to be expected. Um, so the way this character is standing right now, it's there's no uh, solid ground beneath their feet. So when you think about a solid character design spread, this becomes very easy for you to just think about the, the solid ground sharing the same plane. No depth um, required. You don't really need to represent any level of depth. There is no environment. Simple, you know how when someone tries to identify a criminal and they just lay them out? <laughs> along a wall and there's that height thing behind them. That's pretty much what a character design uh, layout sheet is. You're just laying out a bunch of criminals. That's all you have to do. That's it. That's just exactly what they expect of you. Once you have this set up and you have all of your character design stuff set up, um, you know, co um, layout wise and organization wise, you can really get in into focusing the colors, making sure they, they work a little bit better. So his colors are a bit saturated, a bit out there. Hers are a bit muted and very, very nice to look at. And so you see she, she matches a very medium background very, very well because all her values are pretty balanced with each other. But his values, because I, I have to separate them from each other or else you guys won't be able to see um, if they're by, side by side. Um, but his values are a bit extreme. Um, so once we lay him against the gray background, it's like basically getting the grayscale equivalent, comparing him to grays and seeing how the grays react with the colors you've already chosen. Um, I'm seeing lots of saturation. The purple is a bit saturated. I can just use the, um, the where is it, the, the sponge tool and get, bring that purple down. If he's a traveler, that purple isn't going to stay that vibrant for long. It's going to get worn down. It is going to have the purple in it if he's like a mage slash warrior slash hunk. And he's going to have a little bit, of, it's going to wear down over time. But it, it can still have the purple level. So you see now I've used the gray behind to balance out that purple. And let's look at where the purple was before. That's a bit too bright. It's starting to look like, um, you know, more of a mage or something like that. And it's really counteracting the the shield and the sword. But here it's still purple. So it seems to match the gray background a little bit better. And I'm just pulling down some more values, bringing that down. Remember the wear and tear. Remember the fact that they, the more wear and tear, the more believability, the more conditions you've applied. So when you think about conditions, weather conditions, travel conditions, damage conditions, battle conditions that have been applied to your character, how w uh, worn down they are because of battle, the more believable that, 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 that they will be to us because they will have a history. And that's how you invest history into a character. You bring in their condition, the condition of, of their life or their job or their role. Right, I'm going to bring in the burn tool on mid-tones. I'm going to bring down the color of his tunic or skirt. And then I'm going to desaturate because Burn likes to saturate. <clears throat> and that's starting to match the background a little bit better. Very, very nice matching. And then now for his skin. His skin is extremely pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the green um, from the color wheel. As you know, reds and greens don't really um, like each other, so they cancel each other out. So I'm going to bring in a level of green, probably a purpley green, just to match the purples. Not a purpley green, a blue green, just to match the purples in his shirt. And I'm just going to, with a soft brush on low opacity, just brush down over that. And that pink is going to just disappear. Excuse me. Really low opacity, it can really get away with itself really quickly. Skin is a yellowy, it's more yellow than pink, especially body skin. or Skin that's been tanned or touched by the sun can be a little bit uh, red. But, and again, that's another condition you can apply, like if you're drawing like a character on the beach or a pirate, 
that's usually the skin tone you want to give them. It's a really, really rich red, um, brown, sunburnt skin tone. Someone Caribbean or someone from the tropics. But if we're talking about a character that's you know, roaming the, the, the plains of England, I don't think he has much of a tan. So you see where the red was before, and where the red is now. So now if we match them beside each other, they seem like they're from the same environment. So I'm going to burn them down and sort of now, I mean, um, burn them down. I'm going to um, merge them down and show you sort of what you need to do to keep the eye leveled toward the main uh, character's faces. So what you need to do is start closing off the bottoms of these characters, probably with some grays and some darks, a mix of both. And what we're trying to do is bring in the, 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 the intrigue mostly to the chest and the top here. These areas aren't that important. There was a great deal of detail, sort of not that much. But remember, it's about guiding the eyes around. Where is the attention going? This guy here needs a shadow on his hair from that Johnny Bravo hairdo on, me, on his head. He needs some shadows here. Oh, his hair is coming that way. I mean, his shadows. <clears throat> oh, mama. <laughs> I love Johnny Bravo. He's the best. Just bringing in some... Um, did I just wheeze? I think I just wheezed. Oh, God. Um, I'm just bringing in some more... Some depth something to create some level of depth. Bring in the red of his shield. Not the red, the brown. I'm just going to throw it over his skin. All of this is sort of helping us view the characters a little bit better. All of that is guiding our eyes. And so now that the, you have no background to worry about, now that everything is nice and focused, um, there is a little bit of detail problem because of my lasso work. Which I'm sorry about. Um, you can go in and uh, start adding some more details, some intricacies, some some seams, uh, some more highlights, like on his shirt. Maybe you want to add in some more uh, folds, just like so. Um, you might want to. Uh, add in some embroidery or some design on his shirt. It seems really, really modern. You might want to age it a little bit. Go look up some old fashion you know, uh, of, of the 1800s or 1700s or 1500s and see how you can combine it, modernize it. Her chest area, her leather here, needs a bit of a shadow to show the bump of her chest. Her face is also a bit pink. And um, back to figure drawing, if you spend enough time on figure drawing, you'll know that her head was too small and uh, his head is too big. So that's, that's something you learn in figure drawing, head sizes. You really get that, you get that covered. It's a big, big thing about figure drawing. Some of you don't notice you do it. Some of you neglect it. Some of you don't do it and, th and that's good, but you don't know that you're not doing it. So you're not sort of aware to the, to the danger of having large or small heads in figure drawing standing characters, especially for character design spreads. Lots and lots of standing characters are going to be expected of you. So getting good proportions is really, really important. All right, and now after all of this, I have one more thing to say, and that's think about the cube. Um, the cube, of course, is the difference between the square uh, I mean, form is the difference between the square and the cube. What this means is that if you think about this female as a cube, which she is in real life, every, everything has the cube on it, you will know that there will be parts of her form that have the side of the cube that will be getting light or getting darkness. You need to observe the three-dimensional system in her form so that you place the shadows in the right spots and you cast shadows in the right spots. Um, that's very, it's a very complicated little thing to talk about and it can be very ambiguous for me to just try to explain it to you. But it, I think it's mostly cast shadows that you're missing and some major um, light, so determining where the light is coming from, exactly where the light is coming from, and then responding to the light source. So the cube would not be possible if we didn't have a light source uh, guiding us around the shades on the cube. 
or knowing exactly what the cube shades um, uh, or know exactly where the shades on the cube are. So that's some stuff that you need to think about as well. So if you do want to give the background a little bit of intrigue, please don't bring in a big splotch of color that is used with a, with a, with a textured brush. Please don't bring in a, some solid, scary-looking gradient. Um, please don't bring in um, like random uh, little stamp brushes you picked up somewhere. Uh, if, you, if you have no idea what to do with the background, for the love of God and all good things, leave it blank. It looks best that way. It looks professional, clean. You want a character design, here's a character design. Here's an easy to look at, look at background. If you want to have a colored background, you have to make sure it's pastel and has to, you have to make sure it's on this level here. So if you have a color you want to choose for these guys, it can be this color. You can have this color behind them. Um, again, it's not really that professional. Um, gray background seems to be more professional, but that's maybe my taste or my experience. A gray background, uh, a blue background might also work. Something else you can do to create depth in this case, because we do miss out on depth because of there's because of the no environment rule. So you can just gray out one of the legs that is more distant, and instantly we have a level, a level, a level, a level of depth in the background. So these characters' feet now hit the background, okay? And his little, his little Aladdin sandals. You can use some of the gray fade on them as well to show the, the, the little. <clears throat> the little bump, the little, I don't know what these kinds of shoes are really. So you can do that. You can also do the exact same thing with grays. The exact same thing could have been done with a gray. I just desaturated the blues I added in. Alright, so I'm going to leave it gray for you. I know the color looks kind of vibrant and nice, but I want to keep you thinking professional. And, um, what the hell? And I want you to, uh, Keep your mind around keeping your, 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 your stuff organized just like this. Sorry, a couple more things just my eyes are seeing now. Stuff like throwing the side of this shirt in, in some shadow. Do you see how that instant three-dimensional feel we got in, in, her, in, her, in her shirt, in her outfit? What are we just bringing in? Some really, really basic stuff. And we're getting this nice um, 3D looking character. I'm going to desaturate this one more time. His arm is still too pink compared to the gray. <clears throat> All right. Down, down. All right, so ready for the before and after? So this looks like something, a, char a character design spreadsheet you, you'd have been paid for like $300 for to, to, to make for some games, some online games, something you can throw into your portfolio and really be proud of. Uh, before, you were trying to do way too much, way too much all at the same time. And I don't recommend ever doing that again, okay? So actually, let me just expand the canvas because I forgot. I did that. So before, after. Before, after. Much more organized. Much easier to look at. We're thinking about the cube. We're thinking about basic depth. I want you to do this to me. I don't want you to just... Uh, uh, no offense. Uh, th you're very, very welcome for saying thank you. But um, don't just thank me, you guys. Uh, don't just say thank you. All right, see you later. Rec implement this, this, these corrections because it's just going to make your work look better. They're not specific. They're not my opinion. It's the opinion of of design. It's the basic opinion of the most basic way to lay out and neatest way to lay out. It's like saying, um, it's like someone telling you use a ruler, and you're like, well, that's just your opinion. I was like, no, a ruler will help you make a straight line. <laughs> it's not my opinion. It's fact. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, take these into consideration. Stop trying to create masterpieces, guys. Do what you what you're doing and organize it. Keep it looking organized and professional. <clears throat> so yes and yes. Let's look at these form studies here. I'm going to quickly brush over these because I have a video on this that teaches a lot of stuff. So I'm not going to spend time 
on the form studies here. All I can say is keep your contrast low. Try to keep all of your forms inside the canvas, please. Um, uh, your contrast is too high. Uh, high contrast can look like actual, the side is actually a different color if you do too much contrast. And that's the knowledge that carries into anything you render from now on. So, excuse me, um, keeping your contrast low ensures that you will be uh, keeping your contrast low wherever you go. So, low contrast, low contrast, meaning this shade is only as much as the shade it is shaded only as much as is needed. Do you see how much better instantly they started to look? Before they were so dark it seemed like this side was actually painted black. <clears throat> okay, yeah they are very relaxing. It's just form for form's sake. Doing these studies is really amazing. It's form for form's sake and that's what we need to think about. We need to think about what form is and how to create it. When you bring down the contrast, you really just get to see the relationship of simple grays with each other. You don't want to overdo it and bring in actual deep pigmentation because this means that when you guys, all 42 of you, go out and paint a face, you're going to use dark, dark tones for the face. This is why um, you do these form studies, so that you avoid painting a face that looks like it has blotches of black and, 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 and dark grays on it. All right? This is why you do form studies, so you avoid the high contrast. You don't do form studies, so you do high contrast. That's the number one rule. Please avoid high contrast. You don't need it. You don't. You don't need it. Form is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing. It doesn't need that much to really be present. A tiny relationship between gray and a couple steps from that gray to a new gray that's a bit lighter will do more for your image than black and white. Black and white are, are black holes and and washes. They are not going to give you form. Alright. So I'm just thinking about this sphere right here. I'm just trying to shade it to hit a high point. <clears throat> It's all nice and, and dandy when we're all here together talking about art, but we're not just here to talk about it. In a year or two, I want you all to be where you want to be. I don't want you all to, to say, well, yeah, I, I, I'm all for that community, but we see no change in your portfolio. You're all here to, who you are today should be eons ahead of where you were yesterday. If not eons, just if, it's, if you just stroke differently, one tiny little stroke, brush stroke, you do it differently, that's, that's a lot. That's something that you can change. You have 364 more times <laughs> to make a difference in your art. That's how you judge it. Sort of a year from now, am I going to be the same artist? Will I have improved? You want to be a better artist. You want to you want to see better and observe better and reproduce better. Um, not <laughs> um, design and draw better. You can reproduce better if you want. If that's your goal. Um, if you're, if that's something you want to get better at in your life. <clears throat> Okay, this area here is on the lit side, so the shadow is going to be dimmer. Not dimmer, more washed out. <laughs> we all want to reproduce. <laughs> oh, why is like sex? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we were talking about, Mr. Literal. <laughs> sex. <laughs> I should not be saying that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that really makes me laugh what Y said. <laughs> Why did you write that? <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's what we were talking about. Okay, um, so uh, I was going to apply some form rules on this, but I'm going to jump into this because I don't think I have time today to do all that I've picked out. I might brush over this for eye size. But <laughs> I'm not losing it. I'm good. I'm good. <clears throat> All right. So for this one, uh, the the value there's a lot of composition uh, organization problems with this. First and foremost, um, the character, and we're having a holy, holy like H O L Y holy, um, uh, kind of uh, composition where we have symmetrical character, divine presence, requires divine symmetry. 
um, is some sort of uh, God, clouds, that whole theme is working for us right now. So why? If you have all of the godly perfection present, why is there no godly perfection present in the composition? Why is he off-center? He's off-center. No, none of you have noticed, and that's a big issue. And not just that, he's off-center, and so is the light off-center. So you have an off-center character, and you have an imbalanced value scale. Um, where over here, we just have like dead end, like a negative space, like the twilight zone. This has turned into the twilight zone over here. <laughs> <laughs> Why you should be banned if you're capable of making me laugh this much? I'm never gonna, <laughs> I'm never gonna finish my classes. I'm gonna ban you. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> okay, so, so what we have to do, all right, to remedy this issue, is push this guy back towards the center. Close off these stones because they're they're not really important. I mean, look at his, his amazing pectorals. Look at his shoulders. Look at the sexy being of of light and 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 judgment. And then we have these rocks taking up all the space. No, this is injustice. So we need to push this down this way. Bring in some more info up this way. And I'm just gonna. I'm so sorry for the crappy stupid soft brush, but I'm just going to throw in some details. <clears throat> All right. Just so that he, it's, look at that. Look at everything's pointing to him, and that's what you want. The composition is organized so that this guy is exhibited in the best and, and, and most flattering way possible. And that's what we want. Okay. So... Just trying to um, trying to work with what you did here. Yeah, you used a really bright white, bro. Bring that down, way down. So I'm gonna bring that down in a second. All right. So no, not done. So this is I take like I'm sorry I take time to 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 fix it up because I want the before and after to really punch you in the face. I want you to really see the difference. I don't want to the board before and after to be like you know you have to do work to really see the difference. I want you to see the difference right there. So bear with me when I when I do these tiny corrections. All right, so I'm just gonna get this and I'm just gonna brush it right over. We don't need it. I'm gonna get this, brush it right over. We don't need that level of white. We also don't need that level of dark, so get that same blue, and I'm just going to find that really flattering, is it lighten? It's lighten. And I'm going to push it down over all the values, and what that's going to do is all the blacks that we have, it's going to affect it with this color. So it's not going to affect any lights, it's just going to affect the blacks. And that's what we want. All right? We don't want and 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 blacks are not capable. I mean, clouds and high altitude in the clouds. You're not going to see blacks up there. That's all I'm trying to say. There are no oh, there's no object capable of casting such an opaque shadow. Everything is transparent, everything is translucent. Everything is very uh, floaty. You have these rocks floating with him. But these rocks are also subject to a great deal of atmospheric fade right now and fog and cloud desaturation. So again, be careful with that. Find a good reference for the chest. You have a great deal of form missing on this chest area. It's not going to be completely cast in shadow. His, his second boob here, or his first boob, is going to get some light on it. <clears throat> he also, his color, his general color, is completely off the map. So let's find where his colors are, all right? Take a look at this, and now look at where the main wash is. It's worlds away. There's a yellow in between it. Why? Why does this happen? Why do bad things happen to good paintings? Color, there's many videos that I've made available to you guys. Colors um, uh, don't work together if you are not thinking about their relationship on the color wheel. Colors um, will not 
progress your image if you are not actually deliberately trying to match them and premeditate on them and create a separate palette for yourself early on. If you're guessing your way through the colors and you're blind and you're blindfolded and you're just pulling at straws, you will not choose a good set of colors. If you want to make a difference in your painting and you want to make a real impact, you have to choose what kind of map are you going for. Are you going for analogous colors, complementary? Are you going for desaturated? Are you going for a wide array of colors, but you have to make sure you match them grayscale? Are you going for grayscale? Are you going for super saturated, so you want really acidic primary colors going on? You have to think about that as well. You can't just choose certain kinds of colors early on and expect them to work, okay? So what I'm going to do is get the color layer and brush the wash, the main wash, over his skin tone. What that will do is it will mix with the color you've already chosen and it will help match him. Now when we bring in the yellow of the gold and we really just start illuminating, you will see, oh my god, what that, ha what that does to the palette. It will really make a difference. Alright, so I'm going to erase some of the blue I brought over his... All right, so now we have a clean palette. The guy is in the middle. No crazy whites, no crazy black colors or black shades. Um, uh, you have this little side here that you've shown me. This is telling me that the headpiece has turned to the side. It hasn't. We're looking straight at it, so we would not see the sides of the headpiece. Close case. No argument, because... I know you want to represent some level of three-dimensionalness to this, but you have to do it symmetrically because we are looking at the object from front view. If we can see one side, we should have to be able to see the other side, unless this is oddly carved, where only one side has been carved out. So if you want to make it like this, this is a 3D object, just choose the background color and then bring it in this way. That way it will look like this object is three-dimensional. Do you see what I'm doing? It's like it's been carved out. You can do something like that, but I'm going to leave it basic. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start bringing in that yellow color. So what we're doing at this point, what the map looks like to me at this point, is really desaturated blue on yellow. And those two, are, of course, are complement each other. Um, blue and orange are very close to each other. Yellow and purple or yellow and green, yellow, purple, green are very close to each other. So you're having a warm versus cool clash and that's that's beautiful to look at so what I'm gonna do is get that yellow color that gold color and I'm gonna place it over everywhere that the colored that the gold pieces have some sunlight reaching them so everywhere up here over here this is just the base tone of the gold the gold will have a highlight tone that's very whitish and very orangish And this will soon pop because what we will be doing is comparing matte over metallic. That's a beautiful that's a beautiful comparison. That's a beautiful um, juxtapositioning of, of material and texture. Okay, so merging that down. To save time, I'm just gonna get my dodge tool on highlights. And we're doing exactly that. <clears throat> We want to show the glimmer of the gold, sort of, this holy guy, like a god of sorts or a demon or something. And after this, I'm going to have to bring in the glare. And once that glare is in, we will really stamp and, and, and establish the fact that the texture difference, the material difference in this suspended divine scene. That's stuff you have to think about. His face doesn't have enough contrast on it. He is the focal point, so what I'm going to do is bring in some contrast on his face. So the only whites that I want are going to be on his face. That's it. Nowhere else, because the contrast is affordable here. You use, you use contrast only where you want to establish some real detail, some real intrigue. But you still need to, of course, shade around that contrast. Don't overdo it. All right, so now I'm going to either do it this way, color dodge, get that yellow gold. Okay, let's, bismillah, <laughs> for my Muslim friends, you know what I'm talking about, let's see if this works. Yeah, yep, it's working. <clears throat> Do 
You see what's happening, guys? Do you see that beautiful contrast? And it's not an overdone contrast. And the lack of contrast everywhere else allows this contrast to shine through. So now we've balanced it to be the holy um, sort of display that it is. Do I talk like Obama? <laughs> display that it is. So how can you learn how to find a balance between not nearly enough value range and too much contrast? How can you learn how to find a balance between not nearly enough value range? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. You mean how, to, how do you find a balance in values? Is that what you're asking? Optimal value range. So what do you mean? Optimal for, this, for, the, for the case, for the situation at hand, for whatever it is you're painting, or... No contrast to over contrast. So how to find a good balance between not contrasted, not overly contrasted, and contra contrasted just enough? So just to find a good contrast balance <laughs> is what you're saying. Um, make sure that you are staying away from no man's land in all situations. The acceptable amount of contrast should be limited up here. Contrast only happens onto focal points and areas of direct exposure to sunlight. If you follow those rules, you'll be able to find an exact, the exact um, pinpoint the exact time where you're allowed to have some level of contrast, but again, that doesn't mean you're using whites all the way up here. It means that you're using whites that are limited up to this point, and this is pretty, pretty damn bright. All right, <clears throat> and then if you want low contrast, if you're choosing from this direction, you also have to choose from this level. You cannot choose a deep black and this level of light. You have to choose this level of light and this level of black. Everything has to be proportionate um, to each other. So as long as you're using your contrast wisely for the characters. So basically the rule is, guys, don't ever, ever over contrast for the rest of your lives, except except on this on these two situations: direct exposure to sunlight, so an object that is facing the light directly, or is being having a great deal of light sh shown on it, that its shadows are dark and its highlights are hi highlighted. Again, don't overdo it. And a focal point, if you're using it for compositional purpose or design purpose, you're trying to direct the eyes towards that area. But of course, high contrast means high detail, which means high value, which means closeness in, 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 uh, in the foreground. If he is not in the background. If an object is in the background, it cannot have high contrast on it. There is too much atmospheric fade, blur, and distance. All of those things are part of the, part of the system. So I'm just getting into that glare. And I'm bringing that glare into the gold pieces. So to see what's happening here, guys. So we have what you sort of wanted earlier, but now we have it on a on a newer on a sort of a deeper level. So to close off the composition one more time, I'm gonna get on multiply layer, and I'm just gonna close the canvas off near the bottom, near the sides, not a lot, just a, just a little bit, just to keep the eyes focused on this holy event. And over here. Very, 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 very minimal framing, but you'll see in a second what it's done. Don't, don't make it too sharp of a frame. So before, after. Do you see that difference? Okay, so we'll do a before and after now. <clears throat> minor, minor measurements, minor design changes. Just bringing the character off to the side, um, fixing the value range. You see before where he was, it was just completely off. And then after, the values have gone down. Now it's starting to look like a Peter Morbacher painting, um, because Peter Morbacher likes to do that. He likes to keep his values low, bring in very, very minimal colors, uh, very, very pastel all around, and he likes to do these holy angelarium things. So it's kind of look like one of his compositions. He's always using the, the, the sort of um, symmetrical... Uh, divine composition um, layout, the kind you see in illuminated manuscripts and stuff like that. 
Uh, what about the atmospheric perspective, like the closer things being a bit darker to create an illusion? Um, yes, I covered that as well. I said that atm atmospheric, the distance uh, causes blur, lack of contrast, etc. And atmospheric fades. So objects in the background are faded, low contrast, low detail, low color. Objects in the foreground are the opposite of that. Um, a lover change? That sounds like someone who has a lot of affairs would say. Things that are far will have a lover change. <laughs> um, gold always reminds me of Klondike. Only three episodes, but so good. Color range lovers to him. Okay, lover change. <laughs> <laughs> no, what the heck I'm doing? Okay, so before, after, get rid of those whites. You don't need them. Look, they were just like okay. I heard this amazing quote. I shared it with Glenn, um, with uh, with Patrick already. Um, uh, Glenda, uh, Lope, um, and my friend gave told me this this uh, suggestion, which is amazing. It made me laugh. Um, he said that he heard it from another video a teacher talking about it. He said, whites are like bird poop. It's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> whites, using whites in your paintings is like having bird poop everywhere. Nobody wants bird poop all over their paintings. So, uh, <laughs> so true. It's so goddamn true. Holy crap. Um, so be careful not to use too many highlights. You want a little bit of bird poop for seasoning. But, um, <laughs> that's, that's, I added that bit. Um, but, of course, don't overdo it. Use it only where you need it. Um, this guy has it on his face. He's become sort of, he's used it, we've used it strategically on him so that he pops out. Before we used it, he kind of faded off into the background. Okay, so don't use all that bird poop. It's just raining bird poop on him at this point. Nice, desaturated, easy level, easy to look at, clean composition. All right, cancel. Save. If you guys want these back, please, 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 please message me on Facebook. I will send them back to you, or else they're just gonna sit on my on my on my file, the classes file that has about like one gigabyte of your stuff. Some of you I sent it back to you, some of you I didn't. This is all the stuff that we've been critiquing this past year. So please, or the past years, please message me so I send them back to you. All right, now for this individual, Kakashi. <clears throat> The one on whom I had a severe crush for like five days. <laughs> um, okay, so this individual is starting to look a bit feminine. And the reason why is because of his eye size. Um, this is a really big rule for drawing masculine characters. Please do not increase the eye size. What you are suggesting, also they were a bit far apart. You need to have them in the two front qu uh, quarters of the face. So one, two, and the three, two outer ones. Those are four quarters that make up the face. Um... You need to make sure that the size of the eyes complements the level of beauty we're trying to illustrate. If he's a worn veteran and he's an ex-soldier, he's, again, seen a lot of shit. So Kakashi is definitely that. And we, what we want to do is complement his beauty by, yes, giving him a um, uh, some level of symmetry and stuff. But, uh, you know, the scars, the, the, the half-open eyes, the sexy gaze, you know, all of that stuff, girls. Um, but you do not want to give him eyes that, looks, that look like he's not yet hit puberty. Before, after. Before, after. Before, after. Prepubescent testosterone. Um, ice cream truck. Habra, habra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's that's something you guys need to remember all right Christy size of the eyes goes down it shrinks not because eyes shrink but because our head grows around the eyes so if you're thinking about a baby baby's heads are small as heck but their eyes look huge in them same with every other animal my cat she had the smallest head when she was a baby and her eyes looked massive <laughs> now her head hasn't even grown, but it's grown a little bit, but her body's like really long. But something I observed was her head grew around her eyes. It wasn't really that her eyes sh shrank or, or something like that. Or I don't know what, what, it, what we could be thinking. Um, but remember, it's the eyes are a sign. Smaller eyes or tight eyes or closed eyes or hooded eyes or 
tired eyes with bags in them. They all look aged. They are all symbols or, or signifiers of age. Okay, so please avoid the large eyes. Again, if you draw lots of girls, guys and, and girls, if you draw lots of girls, um, please don't <laughs> bring in all the stuff you learned from being a girl, I mean <laughs> from drawing girls to drawing men, because you're just going to draw girly men all for the rest of your life, <laughs> like that Indian song um, that was... Um, <laughs> Never mind, I can't talk about that right now, I'm going to stop laughing. Be aware that you know and are um, conscious of the signifiers for male and female faces. So you know the difference between the triangle and the upside down triangle. Um, all of that stuff is necessary for you. <clears throat> Alright, so female has large eyes, small nose, small mouth. Man has small nose, small eyes. Larger nose, larger mouth. These are the extremes. This is this is just a legend. This is just a guide. This isn't every face for the rest of the, for, for all the land. Um, it's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is um, refer to those as your uh, measurement tools. Ask yourself: Is there more triangle here that is upright or upside down? Before there was more upside down triangle. Large eyes, small mouth. As soon as you recognize that it's happening in the smallest way in your painting run away and fix it. Shrink the eyes and keep the head squared off and you will get hubbada hubbada. That's Kakashi right there. Mm. Um, so the next thing is um, what we have to do. No, color dodge is still on. So we have light in this area. We also need some light over here. And um, I am blushing like nothing else right now. And a little bit of shadow this is going to make them really hot. Just over top. <laughs> um, please stop talking, guys. <laughs> please. Just to cast a shadow over his face. Just like this. <laughs> what? We need a new Ista. Ista needs new batteries, I think. <laughs> some order in here. <clears throat> I fangirled all over the place just now. Okay. Alright, that's enough. God damn, Naruto is, is such a thing. Alright, just closing off the shadows on the face. Just like this, bringing in some light over here. <laughs> okay. You might want to give his hair a little bit more of an, um, you know, like a, you know, like a gelled out thing instead of something more cartoony. You want to give him something like that because you're doing everything else realistically. Why not um, do his hair like that as well? <clears throat> yeah, I'm very collected now. I'm going to cut this out in the YouTube. I'm not putting this up on YouTube. Maybe I should. I don't know. I don't know. You people. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just bringing in the smudge tool just to get some hairs feeling a little bit more realistic. I'm not looking at his eyes, I'm avoiding eye contact with Kakashi right now. Okay, also I remember his eye being a little bit um, fogged out on one side. So you might want to do that as well. Right. I'm, I think I think this is what it was. I don't, I don't remember very well. But um, let's do a before and after. <clears throat> before? It's starting to look like snake a little bit from Metal Gear Solid, but I don't know. It's Kakashi. I'm going to bring in some contrast on the nose, a little bit on the eyes, and a little bit on this on this little helmet, I mean the, the headpiece. Merge down, more before and after because I added the stuff before, after. Okie dokie. 
And that is it for today. I'll get to everyone else next time. Sorry, I always manage to skip this one. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Please stick around for some links that I will give you. Um, so, this class is every Tuesdays and Thursdays, I promise. <laughs> next time I will not be this immature. Um, uh, if you have anything for, to give me, please message me on Facebook. Facebook is the way to get to me. Um, if you want to get to me, you want to talk to me, you want to ask me some questions about your gallery or something, you can get to me on Facebook. But most importantly, we have a class website. And on the class website, there are some things you can do to support the class. Um, so if you're interested, uh, we have class books. And the class books are everything that I've basically been teaching um, uh, in written form. So figure drawing and everything that I cover um, in A Guide to Professionalism, which is just basically everything that I talk about today when I talked about the gray background and avoiding overdoing the environment, um, all of that stuff to really help you uh, create a better looking portfolio that looks more precise. All of this is available in this book. Figure drawing and everything that I talk about or know about in figure drawing. I don't know a lot. I don't know all of it, but I know enough, I guess, um, to be able to teach it to you guys. So I've produced it in written form. Sort of supporting the class this way gives you something back instead of just asking for an open donation box. You just have something that is given back to you, and they're pretty much priced very well. I've recently dropped the price of them both very, very down, uh, very low, but there is an option to buy the bundle as well, which is buying both. Um, you'll get both for the price of one, I believe. Um, so that's that. Uh, there is Facebook here, linked here. <laughs> Buy the books, flip sable. <laughs> um, I think I do have a donation. Yes, right here. The donation box um, is available. So here's the class website. Thank you, Nina. Uh, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. The more that we get out of this together, the, la the longer it lasts, because it does take a lot of time. And, but if I want them to be just to stay year round, I want the, I want us to, to be together for years. Um, and I'm really serious about. Um, uh, you know, just building a community that knows each other for years and years and we all grow together. I'm so serious. That's part of my dream. Uh, so I, I want I want it to be like that. So if you do have um, an, sort of a, a desire to donate or the desire to keep the class going, that's one way. <clears throat> there is the Facebook that I linked. If you guys want to send me your work, there is DeviantArt. If you guys don't have Facebook and want to send me notes, a lot of people have been using DeviantArt, which is great because I also get them always on there browsing art. <clears throat> so, um, you can you can message me there as well. There is Twitter. I post Twitter, on Twitter, DeviantArt, and Facebook. I post the hours, and I usually post it five hours ahead of time to let you guys know that I'm on today. So it's never going to be a too late kind of thing. I also have an email list. If you guys want an email telling you when I will be po when I will be going live, uh, you can message me on Facebook and give me your email so you can get on the email list. It's a pretty long list. It's got around like a hundred people on it already. Um, so uh, if you guys want to get on, go ahead. I think half of those people are from a different time zone. I think half of them are asleep right now. Uh, there is also the Google Plus community. I post on that if you're a Google Plus goer um, as well. So I'm available everywhere. Um, if you guys need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me on all of those windows. Um, it's not just specific to Facebook, but Facebook you can send me stuff and I can send you stuff very seamlessly. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a great day and bye-bye.